So what happened was I was working with David back when he was training for Stranger Things, which is kind of funny because Stranger Things wasn't a role where um, he had a look ripped. I mean, he was playing a police officer that ate a lot of donuts and drank a lot of coffee. So, I mean, he still wanted to walk around feeling strong, feeling athletic, but he had to walk around looking like this, you know, stereotypical out of shape police officer. What ended up happening was Harbor came in a drive, we went into my office and he goes, this is what I have to look like. And he put up, I'll never forget it, he put up a picture of an Olympic shot putter. And when we looked at this shot putter, it was you know someone who was actually built a little bit like David, like big, like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, mean looking neck, almost this fierce, ferocious looking athlete that looked like he could pick up a house. You know, that's always interesting because most actors come into you and they always say, you know, we want to look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club or Ryan Reynolds, you know, with a shirt off. And so it's, it's very kind of, all right, well, that's what you've always gotten them ready for. With Harbor, it almost, in a way, relieved me of a little bit stress because I didn't have to worry so much about diet in the sense where he had to get his body fat down to this low level. He was going to be wearing, and we knew he was going to be in a certain amount of prosthetics. My main goal for him was to develop this level of resiliency. Most people don't think about this. Even if you're putting on a prosthetic suit, if you're in that suit and you feel weak, it's gonna be that much more difficult for you to be able to portray that character. When Harbor started getting ready for the role, I, I think we were struggling to deadlift 24 kilo kettlebells because his back was in so much pain. Almost nine weeks later, he pulled about, I think it was about 400 pounds off the ground for a Chris single. He probably could have gotten three to five reps. He wanted to continue to go, but I said no, because there was really no point. It was just more to prove to him that the strength was there, the resiliency, the foundation was there, and then the rest was up to his acting ability. I need some ID, love. Um. Are you serious? All right, the Hellboy program. You know, what's interesting about program design is that nowadays you really can overlap workouts, like the days of body parts. Training has evolved so much and it's changed so much. So what I wanted to do with David was allow a level of frequency. So a lot of the lifts that we do, do have carryover. And when I say that, I mean that, you know, obviously when you're squatting, that's gonna affect your deadlift later in the week. So you've gotta take into mind intensity. You can't always go all out and go to failure every set. But how I split it up was really, it was a lower and upper body. So we pretty much killed the, the entire body in the first two days. Then I created a day called suit up. And that's my way of saying, what are we suiting up for? Are you suiting up for your wedding gown? Are you suiting up to play Hellboy? It could mean anything. So with David, we really wanted to improve his deadlift because I believed his deadlift was what was tied into his, you know, his back weakness. That Wednesday suit up day was the day I'm gonna show you guys today. And that's our deadlift day, our carries and our sled. Really basic, three movements, but we're hitting it. And the carryover in that day really becomes a full body workout. So excited to show you my suit update today. Let's go. All right, we're going to our mid-week suit update. Eric. Really simple. We start with the deadlift, we go into a carry, and we finish with the sled. All right, so before we started with the barbell deadlift, and this was something we definitely progressed into, we started with the kettlebell deadlift. You know, once you start pulling double 36s, a lot of gyms aren't gonna have more, let's say 36s, I mean kilos. A lot of gyms aren't gonna have more than that. So. Here, down, up, down, okay. So that was our kettlebell devil. So what we did was we went through a period of time where we very quickly got stronger at that lift. We built confidence to a point where it was time, you know, we had to add more load. And by doing that, we're gonna go to a barbell. So taking a narrower stance than what I took with the kettlebells, I'm gonna make sure that bar's on my shins. Okay, make sure that I'm not in a inflection, in a rounded position. Shoulders back, shins packed. And from here, it's, okay. Notice at the top, I basically stiff as a board and my whole body strength. I, I'm not arching back. I'm not bending my knees. I'm in a fully locked position. Down to the ground, dragging the bar down the legs. And pull. Really exciting stuff. A ton of carryover on this movement. You could technically go on a deadlift one day and be done with your workout, but we weren't. We went to some other stuff, which I'm going to show you now. Now we're going to go into probably one of my favorite all-time exercises. There's so many different variations of it. It's called a kettlebell carry, all right? Uh, there's different ways I like to approach it. I either can go for you know distance, I can go for time, um, I can go for like an extreme level of heaviness, 
On this specific day, I don't like going crazy heavy. It's something where I like to focus a little bit more on unilateral work, getting into positions, um, doing it a little bit more for distance rather than grabbing the heaviest weight possible. So we're gonna start with a single arm overhead carry. I'll show you how, that, how this goes. Cleaning the weight up from there. Pressing, trying to lock that elbow out, trying to keep my ribs down, which is something I struggle to do a lot. We really wanna try and stay out of getting those ribs to flare a lot. So if you see my hand here, it's just a reminder to keep my ribs down and keep my elbow extended and my arm back. So I'm feeling an incredible lat stretch, good shoulder mobility, but I'm getting an incredible level of, of, um, of strain on my core. So watch, I'm going down. And what I like to typically do is about 50 yards with one arm. A carry is a moving plank. The heavier weight that you can carry, the stronger you are. It's very safe. I've actually improved people's overhead presses. Granted, I've had clearance from their physical therapist, but who have been unable to go overhead, we've strengthened their shoulder by just doing a one arm carry here and progressively going into a rack. So um, again, one of my favorite movements, there are a lot more variations besides this, but I know on our deadlift, which is our, um, our pull suit up day, um, I didn't want to kill people with carries. It's something that we wanted to kind of touch it, get some good work done, um, allow the body to get loose, feel athletic, and then we move on to the slide. Let's go. Okay, I love cardio exercises where you have to really utilize strength. So what we would do is we would really kind of focus on either a speed day or a heavy day, depending on how he was feeling, how he was recovering. I will never have someone grow incredibly heavy if they are like, spent and wiped and those first two movements that we did with David, they're hard movements. They can really take a lot out of you. So I would really play it by ear and make a determination on what he needed that day. And finishing with the sled, one of my favorite exercises. And uh, that's it for the Hellboy suit up deadlift day. Hope you guys enjoyed that.